Hi everyone, how are you guys? Good. What? Good. Okay, just checking that you're here. Um, thank you uh, B&H of course for having me over. I always, I have a lot of fun coming up here because I get to meet new friends, new faces and do what I like most. Well, second is teaching, first is taking pictures. Um, and thanks to Profoto for, um, for bringing me here as well, sponsoring this class. They are a huge supporter of my educational program and I'm glad that this class is happening thanks to them. I'm going to run my presentation. It's about um, posing and lighting, mainly for weddings, but you'll see a lot of benefits from it even if you're not a wedding photographer. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, as, uh, as Debbie mentioned, I've, I've only been here for 10 years, a little less than 10 years. My background is in sales, marketing, IT, anything you could think of, anything that uh, is not photography. I haven't even held a camera my entire life until 10 years ago. Um, but all this background really helped me build a good business because uh, it is mostly about business. Um, I had a very struggling start um, because English was not my first, is not my first language. Um, but I, I, I'm a good learner, so I know how to see something and try to do, do, it. Uh, do it. Try to do it even better. If, if I may say. Um, we don't have a huge time to talk, a huge uh, uh, t amount of time to talk about everything I want to and I do believe that almost every tech talk involves business and business talk involves tech but I'm going to focus on the two most important things today that can take your photography business to the next level. Anybody knows what those things are? Nobody? Come on. Something. No. It is very important, but we're not talking about business today. Lighting and posing. Those two things are the most important. That's what took my business to the next level. So this is what I do. This is the style of my work. You will rarely see a black and white photo because I like to work with colors and contrast. And I really learned over time that to really show a photo, especially colors, if you're interested in really true color, is to light it properly. And that really made a significant difference in the quality of my work. I only started doing off-camera lighting for portraits for anything just uh, maybe five years ago. So until then, I was doing okay. I was, in my opinion, giving people some kind of an average level of work and, and getting paid, so I was happy, but I didn't realize the potential until I tried off-camera lighting. Um, in order to really ins inspire you, I really have to show you where I started. This is where, um, oops, sorry, I skipped one. This is where I used to meet people, either at Starbucks or at my home, with a little computer tethered to the TV. And it worked well. We all start somewhere. But after implementing all those things I've learned over the years, especially with lighting and posing, I'm not going to talk about business because that's another week worth of talking. Um, I was able to open a studio in 2010, 1,600 square feet where I do classes, workshops, talk to uh, uh, clients, meet, conferences, anything you could think of. And I'm having a lot of fun because I'm very diversified. And my, my average of doing weddings, because I've learned so much and I implemented lighting and posing into my workflow, instead of doing 45 weddings a year, where I used to do them at three to $5,000, now I'm doing up to 15 weddings a year at an average of $12,000 a contract. And why is it? It's not because I'm that great. It's because I'm doing what still most of other photographers are not doing. They're finishing their portraiture when the sun goes down. They're not venturing into using off-camera lighting and trying to do things at hours and locations where you're thinking, oh, the light is just not good enough here. I can't do it. So instead of letting the light control me, I decided I want to control the light. And I'm using the best tools out there uh, for it, and Profoto Lighting is one of them. Um, I'm going to show you some of my old work and some of my new work, and again, it's, it's a hybrid of posing and lighting because you can't do one without the other. You can't really do a photojournalistic style wedding with off-camera lighting because you really can't anticipate what's going to happen, but when you're posing properly, then you are controlling the next step. And I have a lot of great examples to show you. And by the way, 
I hate doing lectures. I like doing conversations and answer questions. We don't have a lot of time for questions, but if you guys have, please don't be shy. Stop and ask me, okay? All right? I can't see you guys. I don't know if you guys are sleeping or awake because <laughs> the lights are in my face. So I used to simply do stuff like this. Just ask the person to lay on the couch and smile. And because I wasn't lighting it properly and I wasn't really shooting professionally, in my opinion, I would turn it into sepia and call it creative. <laughs> but instead, if you learn what to do with posing and you're not afraid to approach, and you understand your lighting, you can create something a little more edgy and develop a style. Very simple. The amount of presets and Photoshop actions I used to throw on photos was so high that you would need two screens to see the amount of layers on a photo. And it would still look over-processed and not natural. But that's where my knowledge stopped, my capabilities because of what I knew was limited, so that's where it stopped. Where instead of that, if you understand again both lighting and posing, you can create unique stuff. This is one of my favorite photos, all time favorite. I took this photo in roughly five minutes. Five minutes because I knew what I was doing. I was able to place the lights in the right spot and pose people perfectly and create this. Where if this was a commercial shoot, it would probably take 10 hours to create. But you don't have more than a few minutes when you're photographing a wedding. Who here photographs weddings? Who here does portraits, engagement sessions, outdoor portraits for families? Don't be shy. I can't see you too, so. Okay, that's enough amount of people to, to relate to what I'm talking about. I know a lot of people want to know what I use and what's in my camera bag and what kind of lighting equipment, so I'm going to go over that really fast. Um, I use a 5D Mark III and a Canon 1DX. I use a lot of speed lights. I'm a big fan of speed lights where I can work with them. I take them. They have limitations, but also a lot of uh, great uh, advantages over other systems. So I use seven. I have seven of them in my case. These are the lenses that I use. I love using a Nexto DI in case you want to know what it is. It's a little storage device that helps me protect my images when I'm done, when I'm filling a card. And I use SanDisk cards. I think that covers almost every question I get it at some point in a class of what's in my camera bag. But if you have any other questions, I'm here. Um, in my lighting bag, that's a little heavier and a little uh, more expensive, but worth every penny. Um, I love using the Profoto Acute B2 Air, and uh, I use the D1 Air. I'm also using B1s, Profoto B1s, which we're going to show you today. It's new from Profoto. It's the same as the D1, only has two things unique to it. It worked with TTL, in TTL mode, and battery powered, which is really amazing. It's like a super power speed light. <coughs> and I use a lot of light shapers. I love working with grids, just like you're seeing here on this beauty dish. So um, I use a lot of soft boxes and a beauty dish, and they all have ref uh, grids on them. Everything in my studio is gridded. Um, the beauty of, of mastering lighting and posing is that I can Diversify. How many here people said they photograph weddings? Do you photograph throughout the year or do you stop at a certain season? Throughout the year. Throughout the year? Well, most photographers have a season. Do you, hear, do you ever hear that term? Is it your season coming up when it's spring and people get engaged? Because in the winter, photographers usually have a hibernation period where it's less income and it's, it's lower budget weddings. Do you have that? No, you don't do weddings? Okay. So, through diversifying, through the ability of working in any situation, I can generate, generate revenue throughout the year. I photograph restaurants and food and families and in the studio and outside the studio and high fashion portrait sessions and, and engagement sessions in the studio, which is a great advantage. Through that, I can make income throughout the year. And a lot of people in January, photographers won't be, won't be able to spend money on buying a filter for their lens where for me, it's the same as any other day. Because I'm guaranteed income if I'm diversified and I'm not dependent on just one market, which is weddings. Um, my first rule for successful, for a photo to come out perfect, is to shoot it right. If you shoot it right, you get it right. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? This photo is straight out of the camera. 
zero post-production, zero. Because I used to do, like I said, a lot of Photoshop, a lot of post-production, a lot of retouching, just to correct what I should have done in camera. Don't be shy, who here owns Photoshop? Fancy, oh, that's a lot of licenses. <laughs> I don't own Photoshop. I don't own it and I don't need it. I use Photoshop through, uh, I have a third party uh, retouching people that just do minor things just like everybody needs for a final product. But the photos that I take, 95% of what you saw in the presentation is as it comes out of the camera. It wasn't always like that, I told you that. Um, so today we're going to talk about posing and lighting. A lot of you guys kind of want to say, all right, let's get to it. What are we going to look at today? Uh, we're going to talk about posing and lighting for engagement shoots. Uh, for the bride and groom, wedding party, family formals even. Um, I'm going to show you and talk about anywhere between no off-camera lighting at all, all the way to three and sometimes even four off-camera lights in my setups. Um, we'll talk about the portability and the quality of the light, the advantages of using certain systems, and how to shape the light. Because it's not just about throwing light, it's about how to shape it and shape the light to light up your subject the way you want it to do. So I'll show you what separates us from the animals. Uh, that is lighting and posing, of course. The secret to successful, successfully running a business and creating successful photography business is those words, professionalism, consistency, education, inspiration, and always, always, always listen to your couples. I have to apply my photographic style with my couple's needs. I can't just have people walk in and dictate to them what I'm about to do. I'm very assertive when I do a photo shoot, but if my couple wants something that's a little more candid, I have to listen to them. I'm going to talk to you soon about the advantages of doing more posing than, than less posing, but before that, uh, I'll show you a few more slides. Here are the secrets to a great portrait, in my opinion, something that, again, I've learned through time. And these are sort of steps Composition, posing, lighting, post-production, and again, of course, listen to your couples. You have to always understand what they're looking to get. So let's start with posing and then move on to lighting. A lot of photographers, they go into a scenario where they're going to find themselves trying to get wide aperture lenses, right? Why? Why do we use it wide aperture lenses? Two? Blur the background. And why do you want to blur the background? Emphasize, Emphasize the subject. Separation from the background. Well, I got something better for you and a question that comes with it. What if your couple took you to a certain spot where the background is something that means something to them? What if this place was their first kiss? Would you photograph this at aperture of 1.2 or would you try to photograph it in a way that incorporates the background into the photo but still creates separation? That's what we did in this photo with lighting. Lighting creates separation as well, not just wide aperture lenses. I got rid of all my wide aperture lenses. The 50 millimeter, the 85, I got rid of them. I'm very comfortable shooting at f4, even receptions, with limited lighting. So the background is extremely important, not just for me, for the couples, but just to create the photo the way I want to create it. You're wondering why. I'll show you guys. We're going to talk about C-curve and show you example S-curves, and again about the lighting. Does anybody not know what a C-curve means? Don't be shy. Or an S-curve? Okay, I'm going to point it out while, we, while we're looking at photos. Again, something that I used to do in a very candid way, uh, just take random photos when I walk into a bridal suite, um, not really be involved in creating the photos, but just showing, um, just showing what happened that day without really creating. Um, portraits, family portraits, couples portraits, uh, a formal portrait of the family before after ceremony that I used to take without a lot of creativity. Um, couples going out. Same as before, just having them stand somewhere and kiss, that was the extent of what I used to get involved with. And I'll show you even a very relevant, uh, uh, relevant uh, photo, uh, strip of photos from a wedding I just shot a couple weeks ago. This bride, close friend of mine, 
asked me to do a lot more candid. She said, I don't want to do a lot of posing. This is the perfect example. I clipped this and added this into my presentation just a few days ago. So I said, okay, she took me to the spot where she wanted to take photos. And it's a rooftop, beautiful rooftop. You can see we have beautiful lighting. It could have been perfect. But she didn't want me to pose her too much. So I said, okay, why don't you go all the way there and do what you want to do. And I'll take pictures, just like uh, true photojournalism, if you call it. And she, uh, I can tell you that I've looked at these closely. And none of these, in my opinion, was portfolio worthy to the point where I would make this an ad in the magazine or make it a cover, in my opinion. She just didn't, it's not that she didn't do what I wanted her to do, it's simply because I had no control of what's gonna happen there. And here's another example from her wedding. She had the entire bridal party with her, but one girl didn't really do exactly what I was still attempting to get them to do. So I got a beautiful photo where everything looks perfect, almost perfect, except this one. Not perfect enough for me to take this photo and make it my next magazine ad. But when I did decide that this is not going to work anymore, I am going to pose and I am going to create, I told her exactly what to do and where to look. And then this came out. So this photo is what I'm going to put next on my ad, for example because this is what I do. As much as I love this photo and I find it beautiful and I, I'm getting over that really easily. <laughs> you would crop her out and I can crop it out for my purpose but I can't do that for the bride that would create a lot more problems than I have now. <laughs> so that for me is a, a much preferred version. Um, this is an S-curve. Who asked me about curves? Who said they haven't seen? Here is your S-curve. If this was full length, you would see that her body is shaped a little bit like an S, the letter S. S-curve. You'll see it more when we're showing full, uh, full length. But you can see how I incorporate the background. And I'm not trying to use wide aperture lenses to, to make things disappear in the background. A more photojournalistic, but still, I try to get involved. I try to tell people, give people as much direction as I can. If you tell a simple couple, do me a favor, just go over there, stand in front of each other and kiss, what do you think they're going to do? Any idea? They're just going to stand like this. Like this. However, if you give them directions and get involved with posing them, I, you will know that I told him to pull her close to him and have her arch her back a little bit and lower their chins and put their noses close to each other and you're getting something that's a little more creative. Very, very fun shoot. Uh, shot it just last, uh, last fall. And the grooms, they get a lot of attention too. Don't just pose them like they're in timeout. Because <laughs> I used to do that. And when we're talking about couples, I like to bring couples really close together. In a lot of my photos, there's a lot of kissing. Sometimes it's because I tell them to do something, because they just decide on their own to start kissing. And I capture all that, and I love doing that. Now, you're going to see photos starting to transition into more lighting, and we're going to get to that part in a second. Uh, this photo was created with one light, and I'm going to uh, give you guys a deeper explanation soon. This photo, you couldn't photograph without lighting because they're backlit. So I had to use two lights, but I also made sure that they're posing perfectly. Here is a C curve. See the letter C? Not necessarily in its regular, maybe mirrored. C curve, S curve. It's very easy to spot, and that's what makes a portrait, a posed portrait, look a lot better and a lot more professional. Um, lighting. You can see the reflection from the two umbrellas we were using. Unfortunately, it was pretty hard to Photoshop and I didn't feel like it had to. But an entire wedding party lit with Profoto and speed lights. 
the front is lit with Profoto, the, the back, you can see hair light coming here and here and here and almost on every person you see here and um, here, everywhere. Every person has some rim lighting to separate them from the background. Those are all speed lights. I just threw a bunch of speed lights behind them. Now, posing large groups is one of my specialties. One of the things I like to do most, one of the largest wedding parties I've ever had. Wasn't easy, because by the time you pose this one and this one, you get to this one, they're taken off. So you really have to glue them to the floor. But, but we use lighting as well to separate, because without lighting, you would just have one big mesh. Yep, in this photo? Yeah, absolutely. Look at the girl's legs on the left especially. You see the rim lighting? There was no sun there. It was all artificial lighting. You can see it here from the hair to the feet, the dress, everything, the guys, everybody. How many speed lights do you need? This was just two lights, two big pro photo lights, both sides with umbrellas. That's it. That's all I had. If I had more, I would probably use one more. Nothing in the front, no. Just really butterfly. And it's not easy when, with a large group, you just have to find the right place. And that's why we used an umbrella to get a relatively broad, uh, broad lighting. Um, here's another group, only one light, very simple, balanced from the right. But posing is key. Okay, let's talk about lighting. Um, I'm not afraid to shoot at dark, I love, working at sunset. Um, I used to have my engagement sessions end by the time sun sets because I didn't know what to do. I mean, you, you, I knew I had the on-camera flash, but what am I going to shoot them straight on, look at deer at the headlights? Yeah, you get one photo and see you later. But now, when I've learned all this thing about lighting, nothing is more fun for me than to shoot at dark when it becomes dark. But the best time to do is I end the engagement session after the sunset. And I call it the finale and I explain to couples, we're gonna go there, we're gonna go here, but let's pick a spot for the final shot, like this one where you saw the video at the airport, National Airport in DC. One of my favorite spots to do uh, shots and one time I had to do a uh, do engagement session for a pilot, so it was even more relevant because he was flying out of this airport a lot. So here, for example, I was using two D1s uh, connected to a battery pack, so pretty much bringing your studio quality of lighting outdoor. Um, and as I mentioned before, I much rather control the light than being controlled by the light. Do you guys understand the concept of that? It's like driving a car when you're driving shift or stick. When you're driving a stick, you have a lot more control over the transmission. Same thing with lighting. I want to have control over the light and not hope for the sun or hope for a cloud or use a reflector and all of a sudden the sun is gone. It allows me to be creative when I'm working in dark scenarios. Um, as I like to do is butcher myself. I think it's the best way to show you how far we've come. This is one of my old photos. Um, I call it end of days. Because <laughs> that's what it looks like with the preset I threw. I have no idea why I did this. I swear, I don't know. Uh, but that's as good as it got, and um, this one as well. The color theme for this one is, um, what do we call it? The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> and this one too, I have no idea how this happened. I really don't. But not a lot of creativity, no catch light in the eyes, basic things, not really something that I, I wouldn't deliver those now, if, honestly, if you asked me. So how do we make things better? Well, first of all, just like anything that you want to do professionally, you have to invest. You have to invest, and not just buying gear, but also education. You're here because you want to learn. I come here because I want to learn too. So learning is number one. When it comes to the gear that I use, I'm going to show you what I do in those scenarios. I typically bring with me to a location between one and three uh, setups. For the most part, a lot of the photos you'll see are use one light, okay? Just one, and it, it's, it's simple, but it does the job. 
Because when I'm doing an engagement session or a portrait session, I usually work with one or two people. Engagement session better be two. Um, I bring grids with me. I either use a monopod or a VALS. Anybody knows what a VALS is? You have to know what a VALS. Voice activated light stand. It's a, an assistant. Yes. <laughs> Or if I don't have a voice activated light stand, I just bring a light stand and I put the light on it just like this here. Um, a cute B2 uh, or the B1, and again, TTL is one of the main advantages. You'll see it later. Um, either a softbox as you see in the photo over there or a beauty dish as you see right here in front of you. And they're all triggered by a great uh, system that Profoto has, which is the air system. It's universal to every Profoto Air piece of equipment. So it works with any camera, works with any Profoto unit. You have that system, you don't have to venture into remotes and triggers and other things. And it's a pretty great system. Um, the steps to create a great photo is very easy. Composition, posing, exposing, lighting, and then adding your little touch in post-production. These are the five steps. Whenever I do a, a photo session, that's what goes in my head. I'll start with the beginning, composition. This photo, I knew that I'm going to the airport, so I definitely want to incorporate the background. When I do, when I set up my shot, I'm doing a few steps. I don't just have the people stand there, boom. I do one test shot, no lighting. The best way for you to compose a photo with off-camera lighting, in my opinion, unless you want to go into metering, whoever uh, you asked me about metering, and a lot of complications, simply pretend you're taking a landscape photo. Very simple. Maybe a little underexposed. But landscape photo. I make sure that I am exposing for the background, very conscious of it. Then I'm adding my couple into the shot. And I mind the rule of thirds. I'm not going to put them dead center. I add them. I will pose them in a very edgy and sexy way and make sure that it'll show in the photo that this is a high fashion style engagement shoot and not just two couples standing there waiting for directions. I want to show connection between them. Then exposure. You got to mind the exposure. Watch your shutter speed that controls the ambient lighting. So this photo, if this was taken at ISO 500 with a shutter speed of 40th of a second, if I start turning the shutter a little faster, you're going to see much darker sky. The aperture is not going to affect that much. The aperture affects the exposure on the subject when you bring in lighting. And here you can see another test shot. I'm showing you simple test shots. Then you bring in the lighting into the scene. You put the light, you position it wherever you want. My rule is to always give more attention to the bride. Girls simply get more attention. Sorry guys. So if I had only one light, it would be facing her. Always face the girl. Don't light her from the back because then you're giving the guy more attention. After you add the light, you adjust the power and you shape it. Shaping it means how you want to shape it. You want to use a beauty dish with a 25 degree grid. You want to use a strip light or umbrella in this case. Each light shaper has a different angle and the way the light falls off. Okay? And then you do fine tuning. After you take your test shots, you can start moving the lights back and forth, moving them up front and back, and adjusting the power. All those fine tunings are done mainly with the light, but a little bit with the camera. As the sun, starts, the sun starts setting down, I'm going to start seeing changes in the exposure, literal changes. Three minutes later, it's going to be darker. So you have to be quick, because for, to get the sky looking like this, you have about 10 minutes, maybe 15. And that's the simple final shot. The same light you saw on the left, I put one behind them, two stops low because I just don't want to give them as much exposure all the way in the back as far as the front. So that's what you're seeing right here. And look how beautiful the skin tones end up looking like. This is straight out of the camera, just adding a little bit of contrast. 
I'm going to show you another uh, workflow, another setup of those images. And one of the things that you're going to uh, uh, get from this is that even if you're not into weddings and, and engagements, I use the same system for doing corporate portraits, which brings me a huge chunk of my revenue. So this system works not just for those. If you're not interested in weddings, don't go. Um, I was asked to do a corporate headshot for this uh, lady with the capital in the background. We found a beautiful location. We brought furniture and everything else. One light, very, very simple. One light and a reflector. So we compose by selecting the scene on the left. I said, this is what my image is going to look like. That's where I want the capital. I'm going to have the lady uh, on, on the left of it. And there you go. Posing her, adding her to the image as soon as I got, got the, the composition right, and adding the light exactly where you saw it, 45 degrees. Final image. No lighting, lighting. Filling the shadows. Um, shooting into the dark and get back to uh, engagement photos. This is the photo as it came out of the camera. I wasn't really manipulating lighting. I only used one light here. Just one light, 45 degrees facing the girl. The colors are true because I lit it with a quality light. I actually lit it. If I, if you couldn't achieve a photo like this with multiple exposure or HDR. I mean, you could if you wanted, but it wouldn't really be a photo anymore. Um, couple that, that, again, bringing in the background into the photo is important for me. Here's another example. Now, this I photographed with speed lights. Four speed lights hanging everywhere. You can see where the lighting shows. Rim lighting all the way from the hair to the bottom to the shoes. When you go into locations like this and you put them, your eye may see it that way, but it's not going to come out in the camera. You have to light it. Same for him. And you can read the time off the watch. You won't be able to do it when you're not using off-camera lighting because you're not going to get that level of detail. Your dynamic contrast, you're going to have to make adjustments in the contrast to achieve bold colors, and it's going to wipe out the details from the photo. Same thing. Two lights on umbrellas, butterfly. Very, very simple. And you can see exactly what those lights are doing. They're giving you rim lighting on the suit from head to toe. And they're highlighting her hair and the detail in the dress. Uh, one light. One light. Um, you can see exactly the light was between those two. There's another uh, column that looks just like this one right here. We were standing over there and lighting them up. And you can see how the shadows fall. And this is really a basic photo. I, I, do, I work a lot in this hotel. So like to answer your question, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, this is an exception. This photo, uh, including the blur effect, the lens baby effect, is really just a lens effect that I have a tilt shift. The lighting on them is natural. It's a sconce. And I'm lucky because it was there. But if the sconce wasn't there right over my right shoulder as I'm taking this photo, this would be the miss of a lifetime. And that's why I don't like to rely on what's available. That's why I bring my lighting everywhere. Here's a, a, a riddle, a question for you guys. Um, how would you photograph this without off-camera lighting. What would, your, what would you do? Pray. What? Pray. I can't hear. Pray. Pray? Pray? <laughs> uh, it's not that bad. <laughs> so I walk into this location. I'm sorry? Reflect, reflection? Yeah. Reflector? Reflection. The sun is not coming here, so there's not really nothing to reflect to bounce. The sun is already setting over there because you can see how it's lighting up the bridge. Now this couple, this may have been their first kiss location. They brought me there for a reason. So I have to reflect it. So how do I set the exposure? Now if you came here and exposed for the background, you would get a silhouette. If you exposed for them, you would blow out the, the bridge. You would might as well shoot in the studio over seamless. So how do you do it? Very simple. 
set the exposure for the background as if, as if they're not in the shot. Take the photo as if it's a landscape photo. You're going to get a little dark shadows here, obviously. You may be more than just a little. And then when you add your couple, bring the light. Turn the light on, then adjust the power awning, the power settings. And this is one frame, one shot from the camera, not composition of two different frames with masking the bridge. Here's another very tough scenario, something that speedlights definitely wouldn't do. Overpowering the sun. Central Park, you can see where the sun is coming from. It's coming from right from the side. It's literally on the edge of the frame. So it's almost lighting them up. You would, I'm sorry, it was, it was coming from behind a little bit. I would never be able to get detail in their face if I wasn't using off-camera lighting. So one light on a softbox solves the problem. Here's another example, another uh, tilt shift effect. So the blurriness is, is from the camera, not from uh, post-production. And we use fill light from this side, just so that the contrast and the detail in his face would not disappear completely. And it creates enough fill light on her so that I don't have to change the exposure to lose the background. And to show you what I mean when I say the file did not go through much, too much manipulation with layers, this is just the flat raw. And the difference between them is contrast. Contrast in any, any Lightroom, any application you can use, any software. And this is from the same spot. And another couple we took there, we actually have a behind the scene with my, my uh, assistant, Steven, in this photo, who's right here. Um, beauty dish with a grid. Very, very simple. The same photo, same, from the same shoot as before, different composition. I like to do um, 16 by 9 crop ratio on images to create somewhat of a panoramic look and leaving a lot of negative space in the photo. And you can see the same lighting. The beauty about getting your lighting right and controlling it is that you do what I call set and forget. When you get your lighting right in a location, you can continue shooting and change the poses and composition a little bit, but create beautiful photos that are very consistent. And that's one of the main advantages for using off-camera lighting, Cons consistency, which you can't guarantee when you're relying on sun and clouds and reflectors. This is the photo of how we shot it. One of my favorite spots for a finale shot is in DC. And DC is uh, really important for a lot of uh, local uh, people in the area. It's, it's very monumental. It's, uh, the capital is very, very... Uh, it's a symbol, so a lot of my couples work on the hill or they live in D.C. and they're moving out, so they want to do something, they want to incorporate that into the engagement session. So that's not a problem. I go to this spot, I block the bike lane, I get sped at some time, but it's okay. Um, and, and I do this shot. Now you literally have two seconds because that building up there where the light is on the left, you know what building that is? It's the FBI building. They don't like people like me standing there with big telephoto lenses taking pictures. <laughs> so I try to do it as fast as I can. And um, to get it done really fast, uh, this I did before I had uh, the, the pro photo and we didn't have model lighting. Another, another advantage to using uh, pro photo lighting, model lighting. You don't have that in speed lights. So if you're trying to focus on something that's really dark, you have to improvise. This is how we improvise this one. We use the phone to get the focus in the camera and then lock the focus and have my assistant, my voice activated light stand, step back. Another example of one light with a beauty dish, being able to expose both, both for the background and the foreground. Even from far using a telephoto lens, one light, trust me, one light is really simple, easy way to go. You can see exactly where it's coming from, 45 degrees on a very tall light stand. I make sure that whatever my couples are 
their interests are or the location they pick shows. If you zoom in closely on this photo, you'll see on her glasses the reflection of the light shaper and my assistant's smile. But again, the same thing. And one of the toughest scenarios of shooting <coughs> is against the sunset. Because silhouettes are nice, they're creative, but you don't want to deliver an entire photo shoot as silhouettes, especially because this couple, we got their portraits done right before sunset. So we use one light. We had an unfortunate accident. The light shaper fell into the swamp, and we lost the $500 softbox, but that, that was worth it. We had beautiful photos from this session. You would never be able to expose for this photo without lighting. No reflectors can do it, nothing. You, you have to use lighting. You have to have, use nice lighting, strong lighting. Um, even this one, photographed with a little bit of fill light for a hair. Another one of my favorites is this photo was photographed on the night of Hurricane Sandy. Five seconds before it started pouring rain in DC, um, we took him out of the limo right behind the Lincoln Memorial. We used two lights. You can see where they're coming from easily. One light is 45 degrees facing them. You can see the little spill here. No photo is perfect. And one is right here on the ground facing up. So you can see the rim light that it creates for the dress. Without it, as natural as it feels, this wouldn't be visible if there wasn't a second light. Lighting up the veil and the dress and creating a little bit of separation here. Um, right here in your backyard, um, an exception to where I put the light, instead of having it face the girl here, I simply moved it to here because here we almost got run over. People don't really care here in the city about people walking. So to protect uh, my, photo my assistant, we just lit them up from this direction. But the beauty about shooting in Times Square is that it's full of light anytime. So you can get a lot of uh, room lighting there just by itself. Another one, a couple that really, uh, believe it or not, this couple came to DC just to get married there because they're very patriotic. He's in the army. She's uh, going to be a military wife. They are from Texas. But they came to DC just to do the wedding there. They hired me for three days of photo shoot. Some of the photos you saw before in the slideshow, they really wanted the US flag in the photo. So their, their entire photo shoot started at 10 PM. Can't do anything without off-camera lighting. But with the right lighting, you create beautiful rim lighting. And just enough details in every aspect of the photo. Um, this is from a workshop we did in Las Vegas. This is a, a three light setup. The first light is 45 degrees facing the bride from camera right with a 30 by 30 softbox. And the second light is from the right, just a bare speed light. Very, very basic. Someone just held it pretty much where I am. And that gives you a little bit of fill light from this side. And the third light, if you can spot it, is from behind her on the left, which creates all this rim light, from the bling to the hair. And the detail level is so high in those photos when you're lighting them properly that you can, again, read the time off the watch. You won't be able to do it in a photo with this composition if you didn't uh, light it properly. As I said before, uh, corporate headshots is another huge chunk of my revenue. So I bring the same system to those kind of photo shoots. And I really enjoy doing it because people don't really expect you to do it. They think they're going to take a photo. Oh, he's just coming with a big camera taking a photo. No, I set it up, which makes them appreciate more what they're about to do. And they get involved. And I explain to couples as I'm taking the picture. You'll see later when we do the photo walk, I'm going to tell couples. I'm going to tell our models what I'm about to do. I t say it loud so they understand why. And that makes them more patient. So when I explain to him why I'm going all the way there and clipping a light to the wall so that I could get nice rim light on the suit, and then I'm adding another light on the other side to get some more rim light here, and then one light behind me to light him up and create catch light, he understood it, and he participated in taking the photo. And one, uh, one of my friends, uh, an ABC uh, news guy, uh, asked me to take a photo of him. This one was even simpler. One light. Beauty disc just like that, 
at 45 degrees. Again, incorporate the background, even if it's blurred. Incorporate it, capture the true color. You're not going to be able to get all the times, you're not going to always get, be able to get this exposure while getting the background in its true color. Now the lights, they're all by, by default from the manufacturer set to produce color balance that is daylight. So it's really, really easy. It's already set for you, you just have to use it as a fill light or a key light. Um, one of my favorite shoots last year was a, a, a holiday card for this family. We took them to a rooftop and uh, photographed, um, photographed their entire portrait session on it. It was really nice sitting on the couch, posing them, standing. And then I saw this pool and I knew they're crazy fun people. So it would be nice. And one of the kids was tapping the water. And I said, get in there. So I got all of them in there. And this photo ended up being the most fun photo from the shoot. It was all over. It's the nicest thing when you get a, a holiday card from people and it's the photos you took off them. So this was done with two lights. Could, I couldn't expose for the sky and them without lighting. It wouldn't work. I tried it in the test shot. If I brought the test shot, you would see they're very dark because I set my exposure for the background. And then I added two lights, just two big soft boxes on both sides, both sides. Off the record, we almost killed the person that day because one of the lights fell into the pool and it was high voltage, but don't tell anyone. But it worked. It was starting to sink. The softbox was sinking and I saw it happening. <laughs> so I dropped my camera to get it. I'm going to give you a few tips just to kind of have a su more successful phot phot photography experience in the future and uh, anything you do for your business, if it's a business or if you just want to take your, your hobby to the next level. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Everything I learned is through self-teaching, which doesn't mean I opened a book and taught myself. I asked a gazillion questions. Uh, every question, everything I know is because of people like Cliff, people like my friends who taught me a lot. Um, and don't be afraid to try new things. Because the second you stop trying new things, you're just gonna, be, you're gonna date yourself. You're just gonna become irrelevant. Your style won't change. So I try to pick up new styles and new trends all the time. And I see what works for me, for my type of clients, for the, my demographics. And I like to keep things still with a taste of my style. It's always going to have a fashion edge to it. Um, and of course, don't stop yourself. This is uh, something that I, I believe in. Don't stop yourself because you're not getting what you're thinking, just what you want to get. Just continue trying. It is really important for me to say that more than once because that's what made me the first time I tried off camera lighting, I freaked out. I freaked out. It didn't work. I threw it away. I said, no, nope, never mind. Not for me. But then I tried it again, and it was beautiful. And it get, keeps getting better and better. Um, I want you guys to try it today with us, OK? Um, this is my information. I want you guys to keep in touch. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or uh, Social Security Bureau, whatever works. Um, because we post a lot of information, a lot of tips, a lot of content. Um, I have a blog that I talk about, the shoots that I do. Um, I'm going to try and post more this year because we've been very busy, but there will be more classes that I'm doing and teaching here in New York at Photo Plus uh, if you guys are coming to that. Another class that I do, and I've, I've based this DVD off uh, five years of experience in off camera lighting for. Uh, weddings but for another part that's a huge struggle for photographers um, anybody knows what's the average uh, length of a wedding we're we getting to start yeah. six you wish yeah, yeah. it's about 10 to 12 hours yeah 10 to 12 hours my weddings are 14 and 16 hours a day but at least half of your wedding you're spending in the wedding venue and this is the weakest spot for most photographers how to light up the venue to match the quality of the portraits you're going to do throughout the day when you photograph the details. So I developed, I, I, don't, I don't want to say invented it because I definitely haven't, but I developed a system that shows how to use off-camera lighting to achieve the same caliber of photos during the reception. I'm a DC-based wedding portrait and event photographer, and I've been photographing for about 10 years. Over those years, my style has evolved a lot, and the main thing I learned is that lighting is everything. It's amazing to me to see the difference in my own photos from just a few years ago and how they look now. 
and it's all because of lighting. Every photo is perfectly exposed, every shot, every time. DVD is available in multiple places. One of them is uh, the B&H store. And uh, today I have, I have copies of it too. I brought 15 copies and we're selling it for a special price of $99. If anybody's interested, grab me or Steven. We have copies if you're interested. Um, was there anything else we wanted to add? Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.